Welcome to another episode of Blue is the New White. Uh, my guest today hails from the cold St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, Mr. Brandon Helzer of Smart Care, VP of Business Development over there. Um, let's all be gentle on Brandon. This is his first time on a podcast. Um, with that being said, Brandon, thanks so much for coming on the show. Can't wait to get started and, and talk to you all about your journey. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hey, Josh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, cold. Um, I think tonight's going to be uh, minus five or something like that when, when we uh, when I wake up tomorrow. So um, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, well, uh, my name again is Brandon Helzer and um, currently working uh, at, at Smart Care um, e Equipment Solutions. And um, as, as you just mentioned, my job right now is a VP of Business Development, but I'll get to that. Um, I originally am from California, um, hence the Giants gear right there in the back, if you can see that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'll just describe a little bit about my background. I'm, I was uh, actually born in Southern California. My dad was working for Corporate Firestone. And um, when I was two years old, he moved uh, my, me and my family to uh, Visalia, California, which is in the Central Valley of California near Fresno, and to open up his own business and uh, his own tire shop. Uh, and that's now 47 years ago. And he's still, he's still running it. Um, all the way runs it from Cabo. He's in Cabo, I think, right now, actually. <laughs> so, um, but I grew up, uh, you know, as soon as I could, I was at the shop learning about, you know, cleaning toilets and mopping the, mopping the stalls and doing what every job, you know, what, what it takes to run a business. Um, eventually I learned, they put me on tires and working, working, um, everything from, a, uh, geez, uh, golf cart tires to loaders and tractors. Uh, we were real commercial, uh, focused. Um, so I learned a lot about life, um, at that shop. Um, you know, working for your, your, your dad or your, your mom, can be tough sometimes. And, um, you know, he hold, held me to a pretty high standard. Um, but I learned from the bottom up and I learned that every role is responsible in the business. And that's kind of a, a lot of what has taken me to where I am and how I interact with people, respect for every job. Um, so went to work through the family business um, until I was uh, in, in high school. Uh, I was actually, you know, all along was told you, know, you, you should get a college degree, um, you know, be a professional kind of geared. So here I am working as a, you know, tire man. Um, but I'm also being directed, you got to go to college. And so, um, I figured, well, I, I guess that's what I have to do. But I also had a lot of interest in flying and, um, had a great opportunity through some, um, donated flying lessons. Um, and I ended up soloing an aircraft on my 16th birthday. Oh, wow. Um, it was awesome. And I got my driver's license in the afternoon and I soloed in the morning. So it was a big, <laughs> big day on my 16th birthday. Um, so it's so really cool stuff. Um, and I had envisioned going to the Air Force Academy um, because that was a college degree. I could fly. I could, I could meet all these things. It would be great. I could serve the country. And um, so I started working on that. Uh, early in my senior year, I got my girlfriend pregnant. Um, teenage pregnancy and had uh, we had our daughter before I graduated uh, in April of the following year which changed my life uh, in many different ways um, and so kind of derailed the Air Force Academy uh, had to get a job you know to, 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 to uh, take care of the family and uh, ended up enlisting in the Air Force um, and became, you know, took a job there, or, or uh, was given a, a role of pest management specialist, um, which is a bug guy uh, for, you know, <laughs> and a fancy way of saying that <laughs> a fancy way of saying bug guy. Yeah. And so I learned how to kill cockroaches, rats and mice, get my hands dirty in the commercial uh, kitchens, officers club, NCO club, or just like full service restaurants, the Burger King on the base of QSR. The commissary is a food retail grocery store. So one thing after another, and I, and you know, that's how I really started in the trade uh, and being a technician was the Air Force gave me a, a skill set that uh, allowed me then to 
for five years um, and transitioned from there. Uh, I, I, I transitioned out and hired was hired by Ecolab. And that's how I started Ecolab. And so I worked in the pest division of Ecolab for about 18 years and, and then moved into Ecolab Equipment Care um, and after several different roles and uh, ultimately led the, the service department of uh, Ecolab Equipment Care, which is now Smart Care. And um, so that's, that's kind of how it brings me to me or here. And um, what really got me here, though, I just want to say was, was your book. Um, that, you know, I've got, you know, fast forward all those years, I, I have my daughter, that was original, I have three sons, um, 27, 18, and 16. Um, my 27-year-old went in the Army, uh, he tried college, wasn't for him, he went in the Army, became a tanker, um, came out, and now he's, um, he's actually, interesting enough, um, back in school, but for an x-ray technician, radiology, to be a certified radiologist, and then um, working in a brewery uh, on the sideline. My 18-year-old doesn't know what he wants to do. He plays baseball, and uh, maybe we can get to that level someday. We don't know. Um, but he doesn't know what he wants to do. And my 16-year-old will figure out with him, you know, eventually. But uh, he's a pretty sharp kid. But I found your book, and I started sharing with the 18-year-old to talk about, you have choices. You know, you, he, think, he thinks, I got to go to college. You got to go to college. And I said, look, take it from me. I didn't go, you know, to college. Initially, I eventually personally, I didn't get into it. I eventually went back and, and got a degree, but um, I, your book laid out so many options for him um, and it opened the world. And so I had him, I read it to him, read it with him, and uh, he just gave me a book here recently. So I gave him the hard copy too. So, um, and he's really taken it to heart. So, anyway, that's why I'm sitting here today to talk to you. All right. Well, I got some goosebumps. So, thank you for that. <laughs> Um, and, uh, man, you did great podcast over. That's his story. All right. No, I'm just kidding. No, that, that is, uh, um, that's a, that's a really wonderful story. And I think just the, the sequence of events that happen there that can resonate with so many people, uh, that may be faced with the difficult decisions too, of, of, you know, not knowing what to do, um, not knowing what direction their, their life is going or, or even having a, a large event that just derailed them in one way or another, you know, being able to hear it firsthand from somebody like you of how you can make it all work um, and work out very successfully from what it sounds, you know, uh, just could be very, very inspirational. So I want to dig into a couple of the things that you said. So uh, number one, your your story about the pest control and, and working at Ecolab uh, reminded me of uh, uh, David Goggin's book, Can't Hurt Me. I don't know if you uh, read that one or not. But I've read it. I read it. I'll tell you what, God, I'll tell you that book gets me through my workouts when I'm about ready to give up. Uh, I was turned on to that by a friend of mine and, and, and I'm related to and uh, business wise. And he's a hardcore runner, marathon runner and not, not extreme runner, but he's, he runs a lot and does a lot of stuff. And he gave me that book and I, and he laughed because when I told him about Ecola pest management or pest management, he goes, that was, that was the worst job is the lowest point of my life is that I found myself in a kitchen, you know, spraying and I laughed so hard. I said, man, you heard that story. You thought of me. And he said, Oh my God. no, oh, you know, but, um, it's not the most glamorous job. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, no, but that's, uh, I, I, I thought that was funny. I immediately made that association. I was like, Oh, this guy's da basically David Goggins. Um, I was. <laughs> well, but, uh, well, so I want to uh, so I want to go back a little bit to the beginning and talk about your dad's uh, tire shop in uh, outside yep. of Fresno, near Fresno. You said, yep. Um, yep. So this is kind of where, if if I understand correctly, this is kind of where you got your your work ethic roots, right? This is where you learned the value of a dollar. This is where you learned what it took to to bootstrap and and to make something work and you know, probably to overcome, you know, if he was just starting out that business. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the value of hard work uh, and what you learned while doing that there with, with your dad. Sure. Uh, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, I'll tell you, I, you know, you can think you work hard uh, until you really work hard. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you know, I, I was the owner's kid. That's true. Um, but he never treated me any differently uh, than any employee in the business. I punched in. If I was late, 
you know, I was paid by, you know, every hour worked and that's how it worked. So every minute mattered. Um, and you know, I wasn't overpaid. I'll put it that way when I, when I started. <laughs> right. Um, and, and so I would work an hour and two, three, five, eight, and then I get paid, uh, you know, based on the pay. And I look at, is that all I'm getting? You know, I mean, it was like, I busted my ass. I mean, this is like, I, I mean, seriously, you know, summers in the Valley of California can get, you know, over a hundred, 110 degrees. You're, and you're outside you're working on farm tractors and muddy and not that it's, it's tough work. And, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding. Well, over the years, as I built up skill set, as I, as I developed myself, as, as I performed for him, I started receiving, you know, pay, pay increases, just like, you know, the rest of the employees. Um, and as I did tougher jobs, there was more, you know, benefit there. And I started thinking, wait, a minute, now I'm starting to get it. Next thing you know, I had quite a few bucks in my pocket and hearing it, you know, and I didn't, you know, at the time, I didn't compare it to having a college degree or not having a degree or all that stuff. I was just the value of money and what it really meant to me. You know, every dollar meant a lot because I worked hard to get it. And, and that's what I'm trying to, you know, teach, you know, my kids um, and, and how that translates over. And, and, um, you know, it's not the hard, easiest lesson to learn sometimes. They're, you know, like my kids are, they're, they're, they're just fine. Um, you know, I should stress them out a little bit more, um, but, um, but, I, but they get it. And I talk, tell my story and I talk about how impactful is the way my dad treated me and what he taught me and how we, and, and how, um, you know, it, everybody in that shop, it took everybody um, to make it work. And when we were really humming, we were really humming, you know? And um, so, yeah, I, I learned a lot of that, you know, from that experience. Yeah. You know, and, and I relate a lot to that because it was kind of the same way when I came into Windy City Equipment, you know, and, and started working with my dad. He didn't, he didn't do me any favors, you know, and uh, uh, I was, I was paid. Legally, I was paid. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. And, there you go. but the, the lesson that you get from that, it's, it's so hard to teach just by telling somebody, right? You have to live it. You have to, you have to, to feel, um, what it means, what the value of that hard work is, which I think is probably why it's so hard nowadays to, to instill that in, in our kids, you know, because we, we endured it. We, we had to, to go through that, that hard work in, in a different time when there was no social media, there was no, you know, you know, keep your phone with you and have something to do in between, in between sweeping the floors. You know, it's not, it, it's not like that anymore. And, and the biggest thing I think is once somebody who has worked so hard for so long achieves the success that, that comes with that, it's, it's hard not to want to share that success with the people you care about. Right. You know, and, and these lessons, you know, they're about deprivation. They're, they're about sacrifice and you never want to see that uh, of, uh, from any of your family members. Right. So and at least that's the way it is for me. I've got a four year old daughter and, you know, so I'm not really at that, I can instill the, the really basic lessons, but I can't, I can't do the big lessons yet, you know, but I'm dreading it because all she's got to do is look at me and say, daddy, please. And it's like, oh, okay, Done. you know, sure. <laughs> sure. And so that's, uh, um, I think it's getting harder to, to do that, especially if you've achieved the success that you work so hard toward. Yeah. You know, uh, really solid point. Josh. I deal with that all the time. It, it's, you know, I, it, tough love, right? You know, there's tough love. I got to give them tough love. You know, I got a lot of tough love growing up. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and I, you know, I, I joke now with my dad, I got a great relationship with my dad and, and uh, I'm glad, he, you know, he, he's, he's still around and um, hope, hope for years and years. But, um, but I've told him, I said, you know, you were, you were pretty hard. <laughs> you know, you were pretty hard on me. And he says, well, look at you now, you know? And so, um, but you're right. I, you know, I do want to share my successes and I do want to, you know, I've, I've worked hard to achieve what, what I've been able to, you know, for what I want. Right? And it doesn't, you know, everybody has their own personal wants and what they, what they believe is what they, you know, they, they now have realized what they want to achieve. And, and uh, so I catch myself making it too easy on the, on, on the boys. And, and, um, 
And it's a tough balance because you, you want to have tough love, but you also, you do want to share. And you also want to share both, you know, that tough stuff, but also, look, there's the possibility for you. If you work hard, you apply yourself, you do what you, you know, you, it doesn't matter what you end up doing. If you're happy and, and, you know, you can, you take care of yourself, you're accountable, you're a good person, um, that you, you should, you should uh, reap the rewards. So you do have to balance on both sides of that. And I, I take them back in my story and I, I'm graphic about laying on a kitchen floor, greasy floor with cockroaches running down my coveralls. Um, and they're just like, Oh my God, you gotta be kind of, you know, the rat running up my arm or, <laughs> or, you know, it, it's just crazy stuff. The centipede, I was stationed in Hawaii. I know that sounds glamorous, but it's, it is it's beautiful. But um, the centipede underneath the building that was coming at me and I'm scampering backwards because it's in a crawl space. And they're like, you did that? And I said, you don't even know what I did. You have no idea what I did, you know? <laughs> and um, that sounds so funny, but uh, it, it really helps them to understand, even though they're, you know, they're computing and they're in that social media world. Um, at least there's the example. So I, 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 I try to share every one of those stories and, and then, um, you know, do it in a way that they can, they can compare what they want in life and work hard. So I make them work hard around the house. I make them do that kind of stuff just to, you know, so that they understand it. Um, and life is coming. You got 18 year old. He's right there. 16's right around the corner. My oldest son, life, you know, he's doing great, but you know, he's working hard. My daughter's working great. She's great. You know, got uh, three, three gang kids now, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, from her. And, um, so it's, uh, believe me, there's hard work out there and she knows it. So she's, you know, she's getting there. Well, that's good. And, and like I said, there's a lot to be said about that. And, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to walk that line sometimes and on how to how to teach work ethic and how to how to promote hard work, um, you know, without without either, you know, making their knuckles bleed by, by, you know, doing work around the yard or 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 the complete opposite, you know, and just letting them uh, letting them do whatever they want. So uh, it sounds like you've been able to walk that line, which is awesome. Um, but uh, so Let's let's get a little bit into your your high school career then. Um, sure. Kind of before you said you you had your daughter when you were what eighteen or seventeen? Yeah. 18. Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that that's a, that's you know hard for a lot of people to imagine. I mean, obviously, it's a big fear. I'm sure of many many people in high school. Um, I want to know before before that happened. You know. Uh, what your perception of the trades was, um, you know, in that aspect, because I know that you, you uh, worked with your dad, you know, at the tire shop. So you probably had uh, a kind of an inside perspective of trade work and, and what it was, but I want to know what your actual perception of that was. Is it something you were open to in the future or is it something that you kind of initially thought you weren't going to do? Yeah. Um, so I initially thought I wasn't going to do it, uh, that I wasn't going to go down you know, in, in that direction, uh, down that line, I should say. Um, I was, you know, I had been around the family business. Uh, I never thought of it as a trade, which is kind of interesting. Maybe it's because of the father owning the business and being the, the you know, owner's son and that kind of stuff and, and seeing what he was able to achieve from, from that business. You know, obviously I was, when the, when the, never that it's easy. It's tough today. Uh, if I <laughs> called him right now, how's business? He'd say it's tough, you know? So it never, it's never just perfect, but there were tough times in the beginning. And I was young when he was kicked off his business, when he started, when he was just him and one other guy and, and, and another, another, another guy, we got a new, another service truck, et cetera. So I saw this, I had a, probably a different image, but so I was, and I was told, you know, get a college degree and, and, you know, be this, that that's where I was going. My grandfather was a doctor um, on my mom's side, but my grandfather was a union plumber on my dad's side. And so I had these, these two different directions from, from that perspective. Um, my, my mom was always at home. She didn't, she didn't work outside the, the house. Um, 
so I didn't see her in a different role. So I had my dad, a business owner, and my grandparents, you know, grandfathers, very different. Um, but I think I was just geared and told to go towards this college degree. When I was looking at colleges and looking at what degree I might get, I had no idea. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, I like to fly. And so that's why when I, you know, I, I said, that's really cool. Um, maybe I can do that. And so that's why I went down that Air Force Academy direction, not really realizing how difficult it would have been to get into the academy, by the way. <laughs> that, that would have, you know, might want, to, might have wanted to get in the academy. I don't know that I ever would have actually made it. But um, maybe, you know. Um, however, it, you know, as I, as I, of course, so that was the initial end, you know, to answer your question. I, the, but the, the other side of it is I was never afraid of the trades because um, I worked, I've worked all the time in it, uh, was very active with my hands. Uh, I love home improvement stuff. Um, I, I do all kinds of stuff like that. And so I just, I guess I, at the time, I never envisioned myself as a career, um, at least in, at that point in life. Okay. Um, so then, uh, then obviously uh, your life got a, a, a little bit off your your track that you had planned uh when you when you had your daughter um you know which i'm i'm sure was not long after considered one of the best blessings of your life you know um i I, I, i'm gonna go out on a limb and say when you first found out it was a little bit more four letterish um (laughs) yeah yeah for sure yeah no 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 that lasted for a while too so that's i'm sure. sure Yeah, I'm sure. That's a scary time. That's a terribly scary time. Yeah. I was a young child. I was a child. And here we're going to have a child. And, you know, um, that was a traumatic time in my life. Um, there's a lot of things to that, Josh. I, you know, I, uh, but, you know, disappointment, right, from my parents and from my dad, you know, disappointed. Here he was, at Air Force Academy, and he's flying, he's doing this stuff. And then, you know, that. Now there's also the appreciation when I, I stood by my, you know, by what happened and, and my now ex-wife, the marriage didn't work, but we got married. I tried to make it work and we were married almost seven years and, and um, we, we, we gave it everything we had. It's just, we were too young and we came together and we were together. Um, but I, I've always, you know, I've always stood behind that, that uh, I was accountable um, for that, but it's a tough, tough situation. And really hard for people to be great parents when you're still a kid yeah and you don't have that you know and then you gap in the the whole opportunity to uh, whatever be an adult without children right you know and whatever that means right (laughs) you don't you get to find yourself or you get to make mistakes and it's only you that has an issue right not not if i made a mistake when i was 19 or 20 it affected my daughter it affected my wife at the time, you know, and that, so I never really felt like I had that adult life, yeah. um, you know, it, it, that's tough. And so I obviously, you know, PSA here, you know, <laughs> be careful, <laughs> use protection. It's, you have to do it. You know, you can have fun, you can do all those things, but just do it in a way that you, you know, you don't bring someone into the world under that situation, it's hard. It's hard on the child, it's hard on the people, it's hard on the families, it's hard on society. You you know, I won't go that too far, but it is because, you know, I I ended up having to rely on some, you know, assistance. Uh, You know, we had to have WIC and we had to have other things, uh, beans. Um, I mean, I was, I used WIC when I was in the Air Force, you know. I only made my, my, I only made $600 a month was my pay as a E1, you know, back then. And when my rent was 900, they gave me $910. They gave me 900 for off-base housing. So I had to, out of my $600, I had to pay $10 a month for rent, plus my utilities and everything else. It was tight. I'll say, I'll say that. My goodness. You know, you know yeah. uh, they say without disappointment, you can't appreciate victory, right? So that's um, right. And that is, is, you know, and, and, so without spending too much more time on this particular topic, sure. give me one piece of advice that you would give anyone that is currently in that position or soon to be in that position. Yeah, oh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, 
it's going to be okay. Right. So, so don't waste the time stressing over the, what has happened. You've, you've got, you know, make sure you take care of the accountabilities from that moment forward, start thinking forward. Um, I would say don't rush into marriage. Um, that, you know, the marriage is a bond between people that should be, you know, uh, nurtured and, and, and believed in. Not that I, you know, want to su support, you know, un unwed, you know, whatever uh, child, but it's not the right reason. You know, people say don't do it for the kids. You know, really don't. You can be great parents, supportive people. And if you don't have this marriage that was built maybe on something that wasn't, you know, the foundation of love and, 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 and compassion, it was built because you have a child together, it can become a problem. Now this, this, this beautiful child can become a bartering tool between people and it's ugly. It can be really ugly. So I would say don't rush into that. There's time. You could always come back together and if you build a relationship and it finds out, you know what, we do love each other and now we're mature, but you're too young to make a big decision like that. Um, you know, lean on your family if you have them for the support. Um, but you know what? You made your bed, so it's time to go. And 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 you know what? Don't give up. I would also say don't give up because you know you, you know today fast forward, a beautiful you know wonderful daughter of 31 years old and grandchildren, and she's working hard and uh, and it's it's a it's amazing, right? You know um, what can come from a situation that at the time you said it the four letter words and the, all this stuff and the, Oh my God, you know, and you know, at just one point you only asked for one thing, but I'll say this, you know, it, it definitely changed the direction of my life. It definitely did. Um, but things like that happen every day to people, things change and move directions. What it did for me to kind of bring us back a little bit was it put me in a position that I learned and valued a trade that opened me to future opportunities. I was not, going to be a pest management specialist. No, <laughs> that, that is not what I was going to do um, in life. And now I look at, you know, I, that, that's, those are one of those jobs where people are like, really? Uh -huh. You know what? I have met the best people over the years that are in that job that are very successful today in either, whether they're a pest or a, a, a bug guy, bug gal, a pest management specialist, a business owner, right of a pest control company or a termite company or whatever i've got friends on facebook and different social media that that i i met back then or worked for me with me at ecolab and it's amazing the success they've had and i would have never met they're just such great people and i wouldn't have met those people and i wouldn't have respected them had i not had that opportunity so you don't know you know while life changing it set me in a great place i couldn't be here i probably wouldn't be here Right. Without that happening. Yeah. And we're going to we're going to talk about kind of how, how it how it led you to where you are today. Um, how did how did you land on pest control? How did that come about? Awesome. So I, w I had to get in the Air Force quickly because of my situation. So mm -hmm. I went in what they called open general. And that means you did not have a job. And at the end of basic training, they give you a job assignment. And it was a little three by five card that said pest management specialist. <laughs> and, it, and it had a, a paragraph descriptor. And my training instructor, he says, any questions? And I raised my hand. He goes, hell's you always got questions. And, and so I said, uh, what's, a, what's a pest management specialist? He said, oh, you're a bug guy. And I'm <laughs> like, what? And I looked over and two other airmen, I got the same job. So the three of us, Got the, got the job, went through training, and uh, that's how I got it. Awesome. All right, let, let's, let's dive into, give me, I bet you have a couple stories, right? You got to have some stories from your pest control days. Uh, I want to hear just, just a couple of them. Sure, sure. Uh, there's a lot of them. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I bet. Um, so I told you I was stationed in Hawaii for three years. So that's the first, I was three years in Hawaii and two back in California. And um, let's see. So the first night that I that I went to work, because a lot of this work is done overnight, uh, obviously, right? Kitchens and stuff closed, and that's when they go in. I mentioned the one where I was laying on the ground, so uh, with my coveralls and all that. I was green. I mean, just out of training. You know, we had mili eight military and four civil service uh, team in my shop. 
and they'd match me up with one of the civil service guys, a local guy from Hawaii. And he says, I'll take Helzer. So he puts me on this line and he says, start working here, start spraying. And I hit the line with a, it's an atomizer. It's like an aerosol uh, injector. And as soon as I hit it, cockroaches, German cockroaches just start just, just bubbling out. Now this line was used for dinner at that officer's, this is an officer's club, right? And not that it matters, but it's a restaurant, you know? So they were serving nice meals and all that. Cockroaches flooding out. Next thing you know, I, I start stepping back. I'm like, hey, hey, what? He goes, no, 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 get back in there. Well, the cockroaches start com- coming out, going down my boots, going down my coverall, <laughs> going up my arm. And I'm like, what is, I, and I'm freaking out and I don't want to, I don't want to be the, you know, the wimp. Um, and I turned around eventually and I'm swatting myself and they're laughing at me, watching me. <laughs> and, and, and I turned around and they had taken duct tape and taped up all their areas, taped their neck, <laughs> their boots and they left me all exposed. So those bugs were all up and down inside me. That's, that's gross. Um, so that was, that was a little initiation. They knew how bad it was going to be. Um, and another one where it was bees, honeybees Oof. had gotten into an electrical um, transformer uh, and they, they needed to get in and change some stuff out on the, in the transformer. And this hive was probably, well, when you walked up to the box, you could hear it humming. Uh, it was, when I finally got inside, it was probably three feet by four feet uh, of a honeycomb feet. Uh, it was massive. And so I had to go in and we had to knock the bees down. In that case, we couldn't save them. They were, they, we tried to save bees whenever we could, but sure. in that situation, there was a no-go. So completely donned all the bee stuff, had to go in there and kill the bees. And um, I guess you never know what you're going to find with, with the pest control, right? That's kind of fun, fun thing because you, every situation is different. You have to, you, know, you think about diagnosis today through technicians and how you got to diagnose the problem. In pest world, it's very, it's very similar. You, how did they get in here? How can I you know, prevent it from happening again? What am I going to use to control it? And so um, there's no book on reading or whatever on how you're going to get that honeycomb out of that transformer and how you're going to knock them down. So I had to come up with a, an interesting way to do it. You can't spray it, you know, you're going to, you know, so I, I fumigated it, fumigated it using a, a concentrate to allow it to volatize. And when it, when it, I shut it up, it came back in an hour and a half, they had just fallen. So the bees had just literally just dropped, went in, pulled the comb off and, uh, People came back and said, how did you know to do that? I said, well, you taught me about the chemical structure. You taught me how it was going to work against the, the, the insect. And I just put it together. And that's, I, it was like, I'm a professional. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I actually, I can do this. I can take what I learned and apply it to a, a, a very, very weird situation and come out successful. And it was, I really like that, that world actually, believe it or not. Um, but I, I still don't like bugs. Uh, not like that. I like to kill them, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> well, I like that. I like that story because, you know, I, I like to find uh, fundamentals in, in the, the professional aspect of what we do, you know, in the trades and, and, you know, that kind of a outside the box thinking, you know, uh, figuring out a way to get something done. You knew it had to be done. You, you had the expertise to, to come up with a way to do it. I think a lot of the trades teach that very thing, right? And, and the beauty of it is that you can take that and you can apply it to other areas of your life or even in other careers should you decide to, to, to transfer, you know, or uh, change your career trajectory entirely. Those fundamentals uh, transfer over very well, you know, because to me, in that situation, it taught you how to get the job done as efficiently as possible. And in what area of life can't you use that, you know? That's right. That's, no, that's, right. that's awesome. So why don't you tell me how uh, cockroaches and bees led to kitchen equipment? Yeah, that's great. So um, uh, when I, you know, was about five years in with the Air Force, um, I was looking at it thinking, of, is it, do I want to do this as a life, lifetime, uh, life job? Uh, at that time, I, I did not. Um, 
uh, President Clinton at the time was closing bases, and so they off they were offering early outs to your enlistment. I had I had actually reenlisted, but um, so I took the opportunity to 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 take an early out, and I found Ecolab pest elimination as a as a, a great transition. Um, that's another thing uh, that was really, really cool because I had I had learned a skill a trade that I could instantly transition from the militaries into the civilian sector very quickly. Um, literally, I signed out at 10.30 in the morning. I had, I had been working on the job for a while, but at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I signed on with Ecolab, and at 9 p.m., I was in a Mexican restaurant service, you know, uh, doing, a, doing a, a service there using similar equipment, very similar equipment, same product, same chemicals, same this and that, but applying my skill, and it was it was that fast that I could move and take that you know what I had learned over the last five years and put it to use. Um, now in the Air Force, they had started to put me into manage uh, supervisory duties, and I started managing people there, um, as as it happens uh, typically. And so I started to put my name in the hat for a manage a supervisor job at Ecolab. Went into you know within a year, I was in the supervisor role and then a manager role in the Central Valley, and then they, I actually got selected for a regional manager role in South Florida. So they moved me to South Florida and uh, managed uh, the western, I'm sorry, the southern peninsula of, of uh, sort of half of the peninsula of Florida. I do not then, want to do pest control in Florida. <laughs> it was intense <laughs> all the time, man, all the time. It, it, like Hawaii, it was pretty intense there. It was very intense in Florida. And um, so I've never lacked for, for work, that's for sure. And then um, got an opportunity to move uh, to increase my manager uh, position. And then moving to Southern uh, California, so back to California, now in, in Southern Cal, and to lead a, a region for Ecolab, the largest region at that time, which included Hawaii, uh, most of California, Arizona, uh, Utah, all the way up to the mountain states, and so um, so I did that. And the last job was the western half of the U.S. I led operations um, for Ecolab Pest. Then I got a call uh, for a role to manage our operations for Ecolab uh, Equipment Care, our our you know our commercial kitchen equipment repair division, and I had to move to St. Paul for that job. So that's how I landed in St. Paul. Um, I've only lived in one cold area in my life, and this is it. And uh, so I don't know where else I'm going. I'm not going to the Arctic. So this will be as cold as it's going to get for me, I guess. But um, and so uh, I landed here. Immediately went out in the field, started riding with technicians to understand what they were dealing with and see see the job from their eyes. I had been servicing pest control, servicing the same equipment that was now being repaired and worked and maintained. Um, by our technicians. I just hadn't looked at it or worked on it myself that way. So I knew I had to start to relate. And, you know, the the first time I get in the in the van, uh, my first ride along, um, you know, it, I, 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 you know, I've got my, not my, these clothes on, but I had, you know, it didn't look like a technician. I'll put it that way. <laughs> and uh, I got this, you know, snub nose look and he goes, you don't know, you know, who, who are you anyway? Who are you? You know, and you know, I get these ride alongs all the time. And so I explained my job and he goes, Oh, Oh, you're the, you're the big boss. And I said, I'm just, I'm just Brandon, man. I said, let's, you know, let's just, let's just roll. Let's just, I want to know what you do. I want to know what works, what's not working. Cause that's my job now. How can I help you be your best? What do you, what tools do you need? What do we, what kind of, you know, dispatch support? What, what do you need? And uh, so that's, that's what I am. So um, I did a lot of ride-alongs to understand the business, um, so I could get to work on on helping improve our business. We this this business has been through a lot of changes. Um, you know, it was GCS, it was Ecolab, it's now Smart Care, all those things. So um, you know, we we we've lost our way along the way, and we've now we've rallied to get tight again. But so that was that was why I was brought over was we were in a not in a great spot. We needed to tighten up the focus on service. And focus on service technicians, and that for the last six years has really been a, a lot of focus of what we've been doing here. And um, so that's how I got that's how I got from cockroach and bees to 
to uh, fryers and grills. And how long was that when you first started at Ecolab to when, uh, let's say, when you when you moved up to, to St. Paul? Yeah, uh, started in 95 and came up here in 2014. So what is that? <laughs> 20 years almost. It's what, almost 20 years, 19 years? Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Yeah. And then, so you've been doing, uh, so is that the same role that you're doing right now? Business development? Actually, no, no. Uh, so when I, I came over, so. I was, um, yeah, no, that's a good question. I was, so I was running operations. So vice president of operations. Um, uh, then, um, I did a stint for about a year, almost leading our sales organization. Um, and we did that right when Ecolab was selling smart care. And so when they sold smart care to private equity, um, we, a few of us changed our roles. Um, we knew that, um, we were going to need to start thinking about looking at another, uh, other operators to acquire and be part of the, the, the larger smart care business. So we needed somebody to focus on meeting people and, and helping that transition and that sales process. And I was selected for that role. Um, I was in backfilled by, um, leader was backfilled around. So, so my sales and my operations background helped me into my current role, which is really about, uh, mergers and acquisitions, but it's about finding operators, strong operators, and building them into our team today uh, together to to make a stronger stronger force. Is what we what we're doing. Wow, that is a long way from spraying for cockroaches. <laughs> a long way. <laughs> that's a awesome, though. I mean, and I think that's why I love your story so much because I mean, it's a testament. You're you're the poster child for where the where a trade like that can take you. I mean, that's a, uh, you know, that's, that's a prominent position, you know, I mean, um, VP of business development for uh, smart care. I mean, that's, that's big. And, and I think that it just goes to show that no matter what trajectory you want to take your career, you know, in this industry, it's possible. As long as you point yourself in the right direction, you know, you never, you never waver on, on your willingness to work hard you know, your willingness to, to travel. And really, as long as it aligns with your idea of success, there's no reason you can't, you know, keep going up that ladder until you're where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a really good point. And, you know, it's interesting because, I, you know, <laughs> I've had a lot of people say, wow, that's a long way from where, you know, exactly what you said, yeah. a long way from spraying cockroaches. And it really is. Um, but I, and, and it's interesting along the way, you, you said, wh whatever that achievement you're looking to, to, to reach, right? If, whether it's to be the best at the trade that you're currently doing, or you want to lead other people, or you want to, uh, you know, sell, or you want to, wh whatever you want to do. Um, uh, and I, along the way, I, I found that interacting with people and helping people, coaching people, um, providing my opinion, whether they like it or not. Um, you know, it helps when people are coachable, by the way, you know, it's a lot easier to coach people when they're coachable. And I enjoy that part. That's, that's why I enjoy my, my interactions today with, um, as I, as I am able to associate with other employees here, people ask my opinion, because I've got a lot of different experiences. Um, I say, look, I don't know if I got it right. I just know what I did. And I know how it turned out. Um, sometimes it didn't turn out very well. Uh, I, I share those stories too, but it, you know, but you know, a lot of them have turned out well. And, and so don't give up, uh, continue to keep pressing. And it's funny you mentioned Goggins. I mean that, you know, David Goggins, he never gives up, you know, I mean, never gives up to an Almost extreme. To a fault. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Like abusive to himself. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? The story. Um, I had, to, I had to listen to that so many times. I was like, this is insane. It can't be true. But um, I, be I believe it 100%. They, 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 you know. but, um, but never give up. And I think that's the key, that if you want something, then just continue to strive. And uh, you'll get there. You know, you really will. Yeah, that my, that's what my dad used to say, is that uh, the su success rate is 100% as long as you never give up. Um, uh, you know, he, he told nice. me that when I moved out to Hollywood. You know, but then I... Oh 
quit that and, uh, you know, moved out to start turning wrenches with him. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious because, you know, in in my book, I talk about how, uh, different people have different definitions of success and, you know, the trades, uh, enable them to live whatever version that is. I'm, I'm curious as to how you define success. Good question. Um, I think genuine happiness is success. I, if I had to put it into as a type, type to be genuinely happy, um, you know, money doesn't money doesn't mean success. Um, you now you may feel I need to hit a certain amount of money to be to achieve what you want to achieve. That's right. You know, you want to buy a boat, you got to have a certain amount to buy that boat. Right. Got it. Got it. But if, but to really be successful, I think that if you're genuinely happy in what you're doing um, and you can find in, in value and that you're able to, if, if, if what you want to do, uh, sharing makes you happy and you're able to find a way to be really the best sharer of whatever, then, then good, you know, I think that's, that's awesome. And, you know, I'll say I continue to strive for that. You know, I am happy with many things in my life. Um, but when I really think am I genuinely happy about my work not yet like I gotta get to a point where I mean I I still have goals that I'm trying to hit I'm still you know I'm not quite there so am I successful I'm on my way to being successful I I, you know I'm a lifelong learner so Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna I don't I'll never I'll never like oh I'm successful with my education I'm done no that's not that that but I being being genuinely happy in what you're doing you should you should consider yourself truly successful um in, in the end there absolutely I, I i agree and i like that answer a lot and i think that uh uh your story it just kind of uh reinforces exactly what you're saying you know with with what success is and and uh the career path that you chose and that you're on now is a challenging one you know so you're consistently being challenged and consistently able to to set new goals and targets that you can work toward and achieve and uh, just, I mean, from your, your track record, it sounds like that's what you've been doing consistently, uh, really, since you entered the civilian workforce, you know, and uh, uh, so I think that's, that's fantastic. Uh, last question, and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you get back to uh, your hard-earned dollar. Um, if you could say one thing to the listeners about choosing a career in a trade, um, you know, kind of to, to sum up everything that we talked about, if you could say one thing uh, to them, what would it be? Hmm. Tell, you, tell you what, uh, I would, I would, that's a great one. Um, I love how you don't give me the, the questions in advance too, because you want to see my reaction. To be fair, um, I did. You just didn't read them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> So um, here's what I'd say. Don't discount anything because you never really know what's going to make you happy. I, I'll tell you what. If someone had said, you know what you could do? You could choose pest management specialist as a job. I doubt I would have accepted that, right? I, I don't think I would have been the one that I selected. But I, So my advice is say, give it a shot. You know what? You know, look at it and try it out you know what, if you try it out and you just hate it, okay, here's the thing. It took, um, all right, so it took six weeks in basic training and then it took eight weeks in technical training afterwards, okay? So I spent 14 weeks, so it's really eight weeks of the trade training. It would have been two months that I learned, I hated it, and I moved on. I would have only sacrificed those two months. But here's the college degree thing, you know, it, or you spend four years and you find out you hate it and you'll never want to do it. So from a trade perspective, you're able to get into something, try it out and, and go, you just, and, and I'd say, just, just try it, man. Just don't, don't discount anything out there and don't rule it out. Um, and again, I'll reference your book. I, it was, you know, I was reading it last summer and I was reading the various trades and you opened my eyes to, to jobs that were trades, 
that were trade jobs, right? That I never even thought of it that way. The radio, you know, a radiology technician that my son's going through school right now. I wouldn't have put that as a trade. Absolutely, it's a trade. What are you talking about, right? I, I, and, and so that just takes, it's like, wow, um, that, was, that was really impactful to me, and it helped me relate to my, my current 18-year-old, back then 17, that was truly lost. And I said, wow, you know, look, man, you got to, you know, you're not telling me you want to be a doctor or this or that or whatever. You know, how about this? And he's like, well, I don't know. I said, don't discount it. Don't discount it. So I'm, I'm, I'm walking the walk on, on that, on that one. So, um, and I'll keep pushing it. That's awesome. And, and, you know, to, to your point too, you know, it, trying it out is fantastic and you're not building a mountain of debt while you're doing it, you know, for something right. that you, you don't know whether or not you're going to do. So you're already ahead of the ball game. College will always be there. You know, if you do decide that whatever you want to do requires a college education or a college degree, you know, and the the whole reason I, I put such a, a a broad spectrum of trades in the book is because I, I wanted people to know that, you know, this isn't about the HVAC industry. This isn't about the food equipment industry. This is about enabling the success of of students and, and just kind of pulling the wool back, you know, and saying, hey, you don't have to go to college to be successful. It's there. It's an option. It's a tool, you know. Yeah. but it's not the be all end all of success. And uh, so that's why I love, you know, especially talking to, to people like you with such incredible insight, um, you know, on, on the trades and, and what different trajectories can lead you where. Uh, but with that, I, I think I've taken up a, enough of your time, Brandon. And um, I really, really appreciate uh, all the insight that you shared with us today. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find you or uh, anything else you want to, uh, you want to add. Great. Thanks, Josh. Uh, and thank you. Appreciate, I appreciate you uh, extending this invitation, allowing me to, to uh, just have my first podcast. Hopefully you'll air it. Um, just <laughs> kidding. Um, but um, so, yeah, uh, again, thank you. Um, you can reach me um, anyway, any questions, um, you know, a couple of things I have thinking about. I've had some people um, want me to talk with their their kids that are going through similar situations, um, and I've done that. Uh, I, I extend that to anyone, uh, whether that's you know a teenage pregnancy situation, a military decision that they're not sure they want to do that, um, or or anything. Uh, and I've 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 offered that time, and several have taken me up on it, and it's always been a great conversation. Uh, disclaimer: I'm not a professional, so I'm not going to hit on all that. But you know, again, I'll share my story. Um, and I have no problem with that. Um, but uh, for anyone else wanting to reach out, um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram, Brandon underscore Helzer on, on Instagram. Um, Facebook is out there, but you know, I'll uh, you know you can try to find me on that um, <laughs> or an email uh, Brandon dot Helzer at SmartCareSolutions.com. Um, any which way, um, or get Josh and he'll he'll get us connected. But thanks again, Josh. Awesome. Brandon, thank you very, very much. And uh, uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. All right.